the oldest gospel manuscript. Papyrus P52 of the second century. Its implication for the date of the Gospel of John. The 18th and 19th centuries proved very productive for intelligent men inventing theories related to the origins of the New Testament Gospels. So how did one tiny scrap of paper bring down a hundred years of scholarship? The famous German philosopher, George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, heavily influenced scholars of this era. Hegel saw history as a working out of opposing forces, thesis and antithesis, which interact and form a third force known as the synthesis. Although Hegel himself never employed this syllogism, others implied it in their analysis of historical data. German theologian Ferdinand Christian Bauer reasoned that Jewish Christianity was a thesis, Gentile Christianity an antithesis, and their synthesis was the Catholic Christianity taught in the Gospel of John. Because there were no known copies of the Gospel of John from before the 4th century, Bauer was able to propose that this 4th Gospel was edited by theologians around the year 170 in an effort to reconcile the followers of St. Peter with those of St. Paul. Bauer published his theory in the 1844 edition of the Theologische Jahrbücher of the University of Tübingen. Since neither John himself nor other eyewitnesses could have written the fourth gospel, it can be neither credible nor authoritative. This theory held sway amongst academics for the next century. Consequently, thousands of pastors and millions of Christians abandoned their faith. In 1920, papyrologists Bernard Grenfell and A.S. Hunt acquired in Egypt a horde of papyrus fragments which included some biblical materials in a variety of languages. In 1935, some 90 years after Bauer published his theory of the date of John's Gospel, Colin H. Roberts published a transcription and a translation of one of those fragments conserved in the Rylands Library at the University of Manchester. Collins identified the text of that fragment as a Greek copy of a passage of John's Gospel. The Jews said to him, it is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? I am a king. For this purpose I was born. I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. Next he photographed the fragment and sent it to paleographers who found the writing to be similar to that of texts dated from the years 94 and 127 CE. The implications of this result were apparent to believers and to skeptics alike. If copies of the Gospel of John existed already before their supposed date of composition, then Bauer's theory was not valid. The original fourth Gospel could very well have been produced by the Apostle John. However, the moral damage had already been done. Europe and America were drawn into two world wars and are quickly moving towards a tyrannical world government aligned against the gospel of Jesus. 
As to papyrus fragment P52, papyrologists have ascertained a number of pertinent facts. Its origin in Fayum, or Oxyrhynchus, Egypt. Its date, it was copied probably between 90 and about 130 CE. Its size, it is a fragment of about 3.5 by 2.5 inches, or 9 by 6 centimeters. Its language is Koine Greek. It contains five verses of the canonical Gospel of John. It is written in dark ink on good quality papyrus. Its letters are informally though carefully written. As to style, it has no accent marks, punctuation, or abbreviations. Some words are slightly separated. As to its condition, it is a fragment with no two complete consecutive words. Two words are spelled irregularly. It was first produced in the form of a codex or book with leaves bound on their left edge. Their format was that of rectangular leaves written on both sides. It had about 18 lines per page, 30 to 35 letters per line on the recto, front side, and 29 or 30 letters per line on the verso, or back side. As to its text, because of its length, line 2 of the verso probably did not include the word estuto for this reason, which has no effect on the meaning of the sentence. Textual critics note that P52 supports the Greek word order of the phrase his headquarters again, found in the 4th century Codex Vaticanus. In conclusion, the importance of P52 should not be underestimated. First, it stands as an important witness to an early date of the Gospel of John and, therefore, of the Apostle John's authorship of the Gospel. Secondly, John's Gospel was widely copied and read in the first half of the second century, having made its way to Egypt. Lastly, the content of P52 stands as an early witness to the wording of five verses of the Gospel of John in Greek.